Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Yelm students. Um, I am Mrs. Wolf, and um, we are very excited to host a Professional Spy Pathway career exploration event to help students connect their learning to career opportunities. Um, I am excited to welcome Mrs. Lisa Cadero Smith, or should I say Dr. Lisa Cadero Smith? Um, who is our Assistant Superintendent of Yelm Community Schools. I am so happy to be here today. So as Ms. Wolf said, I'm Dr. Lisa Cadero smith and um, I'm the Assistant Superintendent, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what my job looks like, but then we'll also talk more broadly about careers in education. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that this uh, career pathway interview is being recorded so that future students can benefit from our speakers today. Um, we will have about 30 minutes to learn about um, this career field and then the education that is needed to enter and grow within the industry and what advice our speaker has for our students. We're gonna be monitoring questions on the side and it looks like we do have an attendee. Um, so let's get started. Um, so our students can learn about various professions and how they can prepare for your, their future. So Dr. Cadero, um, Cadero Smith, can you tell us your career field um, and how they can, how other students can get started, growth opportunities, pay and, and whatever else you wanna share with us? Yes, absolutely. Is it okay if I do just a couple of introductory things right at the beginning and then we go into that? Does that work? That's perfect. Okay, awesome. So sometimes when you have people talking to you, it's just nice to know who is this person. And so I wanted to start out and just tell a little bit about myself. Um, so that's me on the left um, in my office. Uh, because one of the things I wanted to share with you today is what my work environment looks like. And um, so I am just tell you about who I am. I'm 54 years old and I've been in education for 29 years. And I've held several roles along my career path. And so I started out as a teacher and I taught for 13 years, grades four through eight. And I've, I have taught every subject area in three different school districts. And I actually started my career on the Macaw Indian Reservation in Nia Bay, Washington, which was just an incredible um, way to start. And so um, I've been doing this work a long time, and I've had the honor of serving in several different roles. And I think how that has helped me is it's given me a lot of perspective in the role that I have now as the assistant superintendent. Um, then on the right is my family. And I wanted to share that with you too, because we're all more than our jobs. Um, uh, what we do for a living is super important. Um, but we all have the foundation of our families and the people that we're connected to. And so um, in the upper corner there, those are my children. And so I'll start on the, on the right. Um, the girl with the long hair and the black coat is my daughter, Abby. And the guy in the yellow cap that she's hanging on to is her husband, James. And then that little tiny baby wrapped up in green is their son, Kale. And so um, Kale's my little grandson, and he was just born on the 23rd of January. And then back up to my children. So the guy in the WSU gray sweatshirt and the girl with the long black hair. So that's Gabe, my son, and his wife, Carly, two Wazoo grads. And then down below is my husband, Paul, and he's holding their baby girl, Ray, and she was born in July. Um, so during the pandemic, I became a grandma and, uh, and it was one of the greatest joys of my life. And then back up to the picture hidden in the back there is my son, Peter. And Peter is a student at South Puget Sound Community College right now. He's getting um, a, an Associate of Science degree in um, computer programming. So those are my people. <laughs> All right, so I just have a couple more shots of my work environment here. Um, I just wanted to share the picture um, on the left shows my computer and it has this little red heart 
and it and it really does sit right there. And uh, you know, particularly during COVID, when I think it's very easy to feel disconnected, I keep that out in front of me all the time because it reminds me of my why, um, why I do this work. And I do this work because I want to use my life to serve people through education. And um, so that little heart, I don't need any words or signs, but I just have that little heart as a constant reminder um, of my core work. And so when I get stressed or when I lose my way, I just kind of look at my heart and that helps me remember why I'm doing this. Um, and then the middle picture is just kind of like what my office normally looks like. I will tell you the superintendent, Brian Wharton, told me the other day he thinks my office is a little messy, but I'm gonna tell you those piles are very organized and it is not messy. <laughs> I just have a lot of work to do. So um, that's my conference table and kind of how things are laid out. And that's just normal for me. It's sort of keeping out in front of me all the work that I have to do. And, and then I kind of peel things off each week, but it's just my way of keeping track of what I'm doing. Um, because in my role, I have a lot of different initiatives that I need and I have to have really good tracking systems um, in order to, to kind of keep all the balls in the air. Um, and then just in the background there, let's see, what would I, I guess, um, so I've got my degrees hanging on the wall back behind my desk, and you can see like all that technology and those wires and everything, um, because I'm on Zoom calls all day long, and, and uh, it has all of my equipment hooked up, and then just the, the back bulletin board kind of just shows all the important district initiatives. And so they're they're the kinds of things um, that frame our work and that keep me focused on the important work. And then the last picture um, on the right that also hangs in my office, that upper picture I'm really proud of. Um, I was the principal at South Ruth Elementary for seven years. And right before I left, that was a gift that they um, gave me. The whole school went out in the bus loop and they formed themselves into a star for Southworth Stars. Mm -hmm. And then they took a picture from the roof and they gave that to me as a, as a going away present um, when I moved into this job. And so that, um, that picture is really dear to my heart and I look at it every day. Mm -hmm. And then the picture in the bottom um, my son, Peter, a number of years ago was studying Arabic in the Middle East. And so my husband and I went over to visit him. And this was, uh, we were out looking at sites in Jordan. And these were some little Jordanian schoolgirls who came up to me and wanted to speak English. And um, so I love this picture too, because it, it reminds me just why I'm in education. And no matter where I go, I always find kids and I connect with them and, and love them. And uh, so this was, this was just a really, really fun thing. And this little picture hangs in my office too. So that's what my workspace um, looks like. I work at the district office, which is kind of right down the street from Yelm High School. It's right across the street from um, Tim's Pharmacy. Well, thank you for sharing that because I know sometimes your office space is kind of very personal, um, but it's always nice to kind of see where people work, not just what they do. Yeah, for sure. All right. So then we have some questions that Miss uh, Wolf shared with me ahead of time. And so I'm happy to just go through these. And I don't know if we just want to read them or you want to ask them or how we'd like to do them. I'm open. Um, well, I do want to leave it open as well because we do have a few student attendees and I want to make sure that they know, um, you know, we will talk about these questions here, but if you guys have any additional questions, um, please feel free to ask and um, as they come in, I will um, ask Dr. Cadero Smith your questions and then she can give answers live. Um, but yeah, um, we can go ahead and get started with these. I would love to ask them if you want. Um, so tell me what, what made you decide um, on a career in education? It started in 4-H when I was in high school. Uh, I was in a horse 4-H club and um, I was asked to give horseback riding lessons to some of the little kids who were new to our club. And I knew that I wanted to be a teacher um, doing that work. It was just magic for me 
uh, just connecting with them and watching them grow. And I just knew that I wanted to do, I wanted to do work with kids and I really, really loved um, teaching and learning. Okay. Very cool. I do feel like um, people who become, a lot of people that become teachers kind of know, you know, like almost from birth, there's this sense that that they want to be a teacher. So that's really cool to hear that story. I think that's a story I haven't heard about you before. So that's really cool. Um, what attracts people? What do you think attracts people to education? I think um, a couple things. One, I think people, I think fundamentally, first, what I hope is that people love kids because <laughs> it's so important if you're going to go into education that you truly love students. And I think people find their way in terms of, do they want to work with the little tiny kids or do they want to work in the middle or do they want to work at high school? They figure all that out. But I think first and foremost, you have to have a genuine love and caring for people. Mm -hmm. um, then I think people want to make a difference. I think, and I think we're so lucky in this profession that um, every day when we come to work, we know what we do matters. It's so mm -hmm. important. We change lives. And it's really easy to take that for granted, but it's such a gift to be in a position um, to help and serve people and watch them grow. And so I think it's people who want to make a difference. Um, and then two, I think equity is a big topic for people. I think people see education as, uh, as an opportunity to create access and, and also just change lives. And so I think people are really attracted to that idea um, as well. I've always felt like the very best people in the world are in education. It attracts incredible people. So it's a great question. All right. Well, I have to agree because I feel like I get to work with so many um, amazing colleagues, intelligent and smart and creative and innovative. And um, so I, I learn from my colleagues every day. So I'm going to have to agree with that statement. Um, the next one is um, what exactly do you do as assistant superintendent? Right, because sometimes I ask myself that. It feels like you're doing so much, you know, what do I do? So let me start by just kind of giving a framework of what is my role about. So um, Mr. Brian Morton is the superintendent and so he is in charge of our district. And so I am the number two person, I am the assistant to him. And my job is fundamentally in the area of teaching and learning. And so I work on a team. And I think that's really, really important to emphasize because all the work that I do um, is done in collaboration with other people. And so um, I uh, work on board policy uh, around um, initiatives and things that we're adopting in the district that support teaching and learning. I work a lot on the topic of equity so that we're setting up systems like multi-tiered systems of support and college access programs that create equitable education opportunities for kids. Um, I work in the realm of professional development so uh, my department is responsible for providing training for teachers and for principals and for paraprofessionals. Um, also, our office focuses on assessment. And so assessment is super important because those are the measurement tools that let us know how we're doing, how students are learning, and how we need to improve um, as we support them in that learning. Um, also, I work in course development. So when we put in new classes, for example, at the high school, that work comes through my office. Um, curriculum implementations. So when we adopt new instructional materials, whether they're hard copy or digital, that work um, comes through my office. Uh, a really big fun thing that I do is college access. I'm such a believer in the college and career work. And, um, and I think there are so many pathways that, that people can take to a successful future. But some of the most uh, fun work I think I've done in the last few years is 
I brought South Puget Sound Community College um, to our district. And so we created a satellite campus with some evening classes, um, some college and the high school courses that we also do with Central Washington, um, an adult English language learner program, mm -hmm. um, a college or a high school plus program, which is a diploma retrieval program. And then I was able to um, to bring in uh, Y care to provide free daycare for the adults who are participating in those um, programs. And then a super cool thing that I'm working on right now is uh, with Central, there's a new program that we're going to implement called Teacher Academies. And it is connected um, to Miss Hull's career and careers in ed class. And in that program, what we're basically going to do is build that out around Miss Hull's class so that we start identifying students in eighth grade who are really interested in education as a career and start creating opportunities for them like clubs and college visits and um, other collaborative you know, opportunities like summer institutes and things like that. Yeah. And what it leads to is students at the end of the teacher academy program who graduate and want to become um, teachers, Central will give them a full ride scholarship to go into their education program. So I am wow. just so excited. They will pay their tuition um, to that, go to that. Central. So, so cool. Um, I, I know that you're going to have students that are interested in that. I know that there's so many students that want to take um, Mrs. Hole's class and are excited about it. Um, so that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's kind of some recent work. And so then I would say kind of the last um, area that I work in is the area of school improvement. And so uh, schools are all required to have a continuous improvement plan. And so I support that work. And then schools that are um, that are doing uh, kind of turnaround work where they have some ground that they need to, to catch up and they're doing some targeted work to get student achievement uh, up, I work with them as well. So um, that those are kind of the main bodies of work that uh, that the assistant superintendent in Yelm does. All right, that sounds like a lot. Um, how do you sort of categorize that and schedule that? I mean, through your day, how does that work? Right. Well, it goes back to that first thing I said about team. It that work is spread across my team. And so I work with Kendall McNutt, who is the director of student learning, and Kurt Foray, who is the director of assessment grants and student data management. We have a cadre of instructional coaches who work um, under Kendall's supervision. We have two paraprofessionals, Anissa and Kula, um, who support. And then we work really closely with the Office of Student Support that Shannon Powell leads to make sure that all of our educational initiatives um, mesh. And so the first thing I do to get the work done is mm -hmm. it's that many hands make light work. There are a lot of people who do that work that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. It is definitely not me single-handedly. Um, I'm responsible for having clarity of vision and purpose and creating a framework and a pathway for people and then working with people um, to get the, you know, the work done. And then what I do like on a daily basis, kind of like how do I keep myself organized? Of course, I use a, you know, I use a calendar, but I, um, I create electronic lists for myself that I follow and I every single day I update them and I literally keep like a, you know, I'm doing this from 10 to 11 and I'm doing that, you know, it's the only way I can keep my life straight. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of mark them off with a little highlighter as I go. So those are some of the organizational things that I do. <laughs> I am a list taker too, and I still keep an old fashioned paper planner, but I think for me, there's something um, cathartic about being able to cross stuff off my list. Yeah. So <laughs> yes, I know. Um, it's funny. I have to buy a new planner every, every year. And my husband's like, do you really need that? Well, yes, I do. I do. It, it helps me do my job. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Because I use everything electronic. But in addition, there is something so satisfying about like crossing something off. Mm -hmm. when you've got it done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Cool. 
All right. So tell me what sort of education and training are needed for your job and maybe additional education and training that you've received. Yeah, absolutely. So the mainly for, for someone to do my job, they would need a master's degree. And so what their pathway would, so I'll, I'll share what a very likely pathway would be and kind of what mine was. Um, so usually people would first become a teacher. And so they would go into a teacher preparation program at a university. And they there are programs both that lead to bachelor's degrees or that lead to master's degrees. So either one. And then um, following that and, and then some teaching experience, which would be typical, people would then usually teach for a number of years. I taught for 13. Um, and I, I was always so thankful for that. Um, I always thought I would be a teacher. I never thought I would go into administration. I loved it. But I think having a lot of experience just in the role of teaching is super important when you then go into leadership roles over teaching. So, um, so they, after going through that program, students would typically become teachers. And then um, sometimes they're interested in going into administration and there are a couple of different pathways. They can become principals or they can become program directors. And those are both viable. And sometimes people will do programs that include both. And so like, for example, in my office, um, Kurt Foray is our director of assessment. So he has a principal credential that led to his job, but then Kendall McNutt has a program certificate that led to her job. So they got, they each got master's degrees and they kind of had a choice to go either way. So, so typically people would go into some type of administration program, they would get a master's degree and then the certification of their choice and then they would go, you know, into to a role like mine, a central office kind of role. And, you know, people kind of find themselves in different paths up here. So like I do the teaching and learning work because I love it. It's like my life's work. It's the whole reason I got into this business. It lets me serve kids. Um, but there are other people that do the human resources work. So mm -hmm. they focus on hiring and um collective bargaining agreements and things like that. Uh, other people may choose to, to go into finance and they want to um, control the district budget and organize the money and, and make sure that all the funding is in place. Um, and let's see what else. They, some people up here might go into special education like Mr. Shannon Powell, and they want to serve um, students who need additional support uh, and, uh, and are really passionate about that. And then if you want that really big top job, that's what Mr. Brian Wharton does. And you become the superintendent and uh, the person who oversees all of the, all of the school district. So I would say to summarize, to work at this job, you need a master's degree. You need to have been a teacher, most likely, though not always, um, and then a, a, an administrative certificate. Okay. And and really, I think for students to know that um, you know it sounds like a lot of education, but you're doing that over you know a. A longer period of time and you know like I received my master's degree while I was still full-time teaching and I know that's how most teachers do it and so it it is definitely possible to do it while you <laughs> have a full-time teaching job um, or or full-time you know ad administrative job so yeah, okay. and I, I think it's super important that you brought that up because sometimes like what I talked about could sound really overwhelming it could sound like oh I don't want to do all that <laughs> But you do it in bite-sized pieces. Mm -hmm. It's that they're stackable credentials. You know, you start out and you do one small piece and then you get good mm -hmm. at that and you want to do the next piece. And I will say like, I never could have imagined myself early on being an assistant superintendent, but what happens is you just grow through your job as you mm -hmm. go. And then you kind of keep setting your sights on on you know these next things and i i didn't mention it um because i forgot but i also have a doctorate and that is not required for my job um but i did it um, mainly because it was just kind of a bucket list thing for me mm -hmm. it was just i just saw it as 
you know, kind of the final piece of my formal education and I wanted to really challenge myself. Um, and so I have a doctorate, but you don't have to have a doctorate to do my job. Okay. I think I'm kind of in the same boat as you that I want to eventually get a doctorate, but I feel like I, I want to have a little more focus on, um, you know, where I want to go first. Right. So, all right. Um, well, one of the next questions is how do I use reading, writing, and communication skills? And I know um, in some of the business courses I teach, actually all of them, we talk a lot about effective communication. So tell me a little bit about how you use those skills. Those are the skills I use most. <laughs> down. <laughs> And I think some of my training started back in 4-H when I had to give presentations. It was some of the best early training that I had. Um, I have to give uh, presentations to the school board um, all day long. I conduct meetings with people. And it's not just about sitting down and talking to people, but there's a lot of preparation that goes into meetings so that they go well. You have to have a very clear intention for the meeting and you have to have the ability to collaborate and work well and be a good listener as well as a sharer of information. And so that's a really important communication skill um, that I use all the time. I write <clears throat> constantly and all sorts of different things. Um, I have to write up initiatives. I have to write simple emails to people. Um, and so I, I do have to have the ability to communicate effectively all the time, you know, in writing. So I would say I use those skills the most. Okay. And then we talked a little bit earlier before the students came on, but um, how do you think you use math or how could you explain how you use math in your job? Right. I use math a lot, a lot of statistics. So what we're looking at all the time is that question, are we being effective? Are students learning? Um, are the programs that we put in place working for them? And so we have to constantly look at the student assessment scores. We look at things like um, student attendance, uh, students who are being successful in our programs, number of students enrolled in programs. We look at how are different groups of students performing to really make sure from an equity standpoint that we're serving all kids. Mm -hmm. So I would say I use math all the time and it's I use a lot of um, a lot of statistics in my work. Okay. All right. Um, I know we're kind of running short on time, so I want to make sure that we get some of these um, important questions. And I think um, I would love to hear what's your favorite part of your job? I my favorite part is probably two things. It's um, that I get to make a difference in the lives of kids and that I get to support teachers and that I get to work on an incredible team. Um, those are just hands down the things that uh, that I love most. All right. Um, and what can students do starting now and even starting in high school, um, you know, getting started towards that path um, into education? Yeah, I would say take every opportunity they can to work with students. So that that can be everything from um, babysitting to volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club, volunteering in classrooms. Um, talking with your teachers about what they like about their jobs and asking them kind of what their day-to-day -day experience is like. Um, being a good student, you know, really uh, developing your writing skills, your speaking skills, you know, using your high school opportunities to develop yourself um, because those are all skills you're going to need as a teacher and of course you'll need in college. Um, but I would say, yeah, every Take every chance you can to work with kids, to ask people about the profession, and then to develop yourself as a student so you're ready to go into um, the university and, and start your education program. All right, very good. Um, and what opportunities are offered um, in the district for employees to grow and learn within the field of education? 
Yeah, a lot. Um, so when employees first start with us, we, uh, we have an orientation. And so we make sure that they understand all the basics about working in our district. So that can be everything from how do I get medical insurance to what's my daily schedule? Um, how do I access my computer and my login? So it's all that kind of stuff. Um, but then the, the training gets very specific based on what your job is. And so in through my office, we focus on the teachers. And so we do um, an onboarding program. We, it's called New Teacher Academy. And so every teacher who's new is paired with a mentor and then they meet with their mentor on an ongoing basis. And then they also attend monthly meetings, um, both sometimes by themselves, sometimes with their mentor and they get constant support around just becoming a teacher. So everything from, you know, how do I do parent teacher conferences? Um, you know, how do I handle discipline problems? How do I teach this math lesson most effectively? It can be all those sorts of things and, and more. And then we offer ongoing professional development for, um, for all teachers. And so often those that's those are things like um, when we get a new curriculum, we make sure that people get training in those instructional materials, um, topics around equity. So for example, next month, we have some modules coming out on racial equity that we're gonna share. We have two big professional development days during the year where we bring in guest speakers on timely topics and, um, and they work with the staff. And so it's, it's kind of orientation, induction for new people, and then ongoing so that people in the profession have opportunities to constantly grow. And then we provide um, principals with professional development and paraprofessionals as well. Yeah, um, I think it's important for kids to know that um, you know, in a lot of different professions, this is true, but especially as an educator, um, you really have to be a lifelong learner because I feel like every year something's changing and you um, change your strategies for engaging students or your curriculum changes and you're constantly learning how to improve your practice as an educator. So I think um, if you want to, if you think that you want to be a teacher um, or an assistant superintendent um, that you have to um, be open to learning new things all the time. <laughs> you are 100% right. And I think a lot of us love learning. So we think that's a great mm -hmm. part about the job. Um, but you're absolutely right. It changes and we learn a lot of new things like we learn how the brain works. And so that changes how we approach teaching. And, uh, and, it's, and it's fun and exciting. And it means that we are never bored. Yes, for sure. Okay, um, one last thing. What do you wish someone would have told you before you entered the education field? Oh my gosh, how long the hours can be sometimes. It, teaching is a lot of work. And I don't say that at all to scare people, but I say that to know to, to, do, to do this profession well, you have to be willing to put in the time you know, to do it um, because it's not just the time that you spend in classrooms with students, but it's all the time that you spend preparing and you know, developing yourself. And as you go along, it gets better. But I think that was the biggest surprise for me at first was it was taking, you know, it took me a while to plan and be ready for my classes and grade my papers, you know, and all of that. Um, and I think the other thing that's important that I, I, I guess, I, I think people did tell me this, but just this, this is really about students and their future. And so the, the kinds of people that we want going into this work are people who love children, students who want to make a difference, who are passionate because the work is so important. Those, those are the people that we need. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. And, you know, I know that you, uh, clearly you are very busy with all of those jobs that you have to do. Um, so I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to our students. Um, and, you know, I know that there's going to be 
a lot of kids that are interested in going into the field of education and maybe as a, a teacher or maybe even as an assistant superintendent or um, in another ad administrative position. So um, it's always good to kind of hear someone's um, kind of their viewpoint um, of it. So, and I appreciate so much that you were here today. So thank you. Thank you so much. I've been looking forward to this all week. And I just, I just want to say I'm excited for students that are considering education as a career path. It is the best job in the world. It truly is. And I just want to say too, that if um, students would like to reach out to me, they can. And so there's my email, um, my work email. And if people watch this or watch the recording and would like to like to ask me some questions, they're very happy to email me as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today.